What's up everybody, Son of Terror 92 here and I'm coming to you with some Battlefield 4 gameplay. Battlefield 4, something that I've been really enjoying these past couple of weeks during my study week break. Yes, I am that evil, I should be studying right now, but instead I'm popping caps, popping a cap. Is that phrase still a thing? Busting heads online and making random videos for you to watch and tune into during your downtime, but I want to take some time off to talk about something that I've had to force myself to experience these past three years, yes, that long, three years, and that is college and the experience of getting an education in Malaysia's number one private university, multimedia university, that's right. I am currently pursuing my bachelor's degree in engineering, majoring in microwave communications. The only reason of which I chose to pursue that major was because I thought I could perhaps someday by a long shot get a job for SETI and just spend the rest of my days listening to the sound of space so that we can contact our brethren from out there among the stars. Yes, I'm a big astronomy and space geek but I ended up in engineering. I thought it was the closest thing related to what I wanted to do so that's how I ended up here. But at the end of the day I never really wanted to be an engineer in the first place and this is actually a popular topic of bitching with me and my friends saying that oh this place is terrible why are we even here and and it's, it's a big question that a lot of us have to face us 18 to 24 year olds. I mean very few of us actually want to be here and the few of us that actually want to be here end up facing the same problem with the education system. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of highlights that I would say that I would keep till the end of my days. Like last semester we ended up visiting Mesat and Mesat is a satellite communications company that's responsible for delivering satellite TV broadcasting to Malaysia and regions around Southeast Asia. And I thought it was really awesome when we got an opportunity to see all the radar arrays and we actually managed to visit the operations center where, where they did station keeping for the satellites and what station keeping is is that you got to make sure that the satellite stays within its area and doesn't collide with other satellites or doesn't end up falling out of its orbit path and I thought that was really cool. We went into the room where you could actually fly the satellite and I could see everyone's face just lighting up and I asked the guy, can I fly it? Can I fly it? And then the guy who was in charge said, what kind of qualifications do you have? And I said, I play a lot of video games, so I thought that counted for something. <laughs> Playing Ace Combat does not make you certified to fly satellites. But anyway, there were some highlights that I would say I would keep from my experiences in college. My education is four years, so I still have another year of this, shall I say it, bullshit to go through. And I know, I know it may sound a bit ungrateful for me to live such a sheltered and privileged existence with even a scholarship to go on top, to go through this system that has been put here for my benefit and not be grateful for the adults who run it, which you might think sounds a bit immature. The education system here is infinitely frustrating because it really makes you turn into an individual that can only think in one direction. Oh God, did I just say one direction? And a big part of that is because of this thing called the Washington Accord that Malaysia has signed on to. There are many different countries that sign on to the Washington Accord, such as Australia, Canada, Hong Kong, Russia, the UK, the US, and Malaysia and Singapore. What the Washington Accord is, is that it's an agreement to standardize the qualifications of technical and engineering degrees so that when a person from one country wants to work in another country that is signed under the Washington Accord, all the qualifications meet the requirements and it's much easier for them to get jobs in other countries. But I'm okay with that. I'm fine with those benefits. But what the Washington Accord does is that it puts in place a crap ton, and I mean a crap ton of paperwork for the universities to deal with. Each university has got to deal with satisfying various checkboxes from the Evil Accreditation Council. Yeah, that's what EAC stands for. Evil Accreditation Council. Not Engineering Accreditation Council, but Evil Accreditation Council. If we don't satisfy these checkboxes and get all this paperwork done for the university to be evaluated, then you can't, you don't qualify for the Washington Accord. What this results in is that the university has to have a lot of standardized tests. And standardized tests is the bane of human beings that want 
to be critical thinkers, in my opinion, in my honest opinion. Maybe there are people out there who think that critical thinkers are able to deal with standardized tests, but because no two minds in the universe are ever alike, I think that it can only result in trouble for people like me and a bunch of my friends too. I mean, I know a bunch of talented people out there who can get the job done, who have the drive to strive and succeed and have the moxie to just take on life and be champions at it. And these people are really awesome, but because of the system put in place by the university and this political agenda of having a very standardized education system, these people are kind of limited in terms of their creative capacity. If they do want to express themselves, and then they have to find time in between all the rigorous examinations. And it really doesn't allow them to shine as human beings. We are breeding a generation of people with stagnant minds to become robots. We are breeding a generation of robots. The system has been put in place to make everyone the same. And I am against that. I am for diversity within the human race. And I'm not talking about diversity in, in religion or in gender. I'm talking about the diversity of your thoughts and how your brain operates. Because I think that once you have that within a society, just so many colors of the rainbow of the mind, the rainbow of the mind, that's totally a thing now. And once you fill the world with that, we can produce such awesome things like to me, awesome things like iPhones and spaceships and NASA and Carl Sagan, that kind of stuff. Of course, that's how the color of my mind wants to paint the world. But the color of somebody else's mind from, say, the faculty of management would want to paint the world in, in another way to solve poverty, to solve social justice issues. That's what gets them on. But because of the standardization in the way the university is being run and how we have to deal with all these tests. They take away the humanity. They take away the humanity that can be found in using your mind for the benefit of all humankind. I mean, speaking from experience of this one kid that I knew, he's a genius. He's a bona fide genius. We were doing microcontroller assignment and what a microcontroller is, is like it's this tiny little chip based computer, blah, blah, blah. Technical, technical, technical. And what you do with the microcontroller is that you make code for it, give instructions for what it's supposed to do. My group went out and bought this expensive machine for like a hundred bucks to burn the code into the chip so that it'll work. In the end, the machine didn't work and we didn't know how to get that expensive machine running. Yeah, bad investment. But this one guy in this other group, who is actually one of my close friends now, he built his own burner machine based on nothing but instructions off the internet. But at the end of the day, they didn't look at whether that kid managed to build a freaking microcontroller machine burner for 8051 because that's not part of the evaluation. To me, by the fact that that kid could build that, that guy deserves an A++. And that kid who is taking the same exam as me this coming Wednesday is now as equally disinterested as me. I mean, I'm the kid who doesn't even want to be here. And he's the kid who has the talent, the raw materials for problem solving to make a great engineer. And he's as equally as disenchanted as me. So it's not just the person aspiring astrophysicist who ended up getting an education as an engineer who becomes uninterested. It, it is also the aspiring engineer who is being trained to become an engineer ends up not being interested in being an engineer, which is really weird, super weird. And what's coming in the next week is just another exam on the road to absolute mental mundanity. And to me, the most important lesson that I learned out of all of this, I could have actually just learned from watching the first Hunger Games movie or reading the book. And was that line in the book? If I can recall that rooftop scene correctly, I thought it was a really powerful line. When PETA said that if he's gonna die, he's gonna show them he's not just another piece in their games. And that's what I've learned from going to college. That we get past the system accreditating ignorance, but surpassing that to find inspiration. Honestly, it's been a long three years and I just can't wait for it to be over. That's all for me, Son of Terra 92 signing off with another science epic video log. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.